Take a simple idea and take it seriously. This this is I kind don't of know the what idea. to think about that. It's like the idea of do one thing and go deep. Um, it ah. follows through the entire investing practice that we teach. Honest to God, if you still you'll you'll notice it when I, after a while you just look at it and go, yeah, that's what we're doing. Like initially, the biggest problem that people have when they try to start investing is they try to do too much. They go too broad and they need to focus down very very narrowly and then get really deep in that one thing. Say the quote again. Take a simple idea and take it seriously. Okay, take a simple idea and take it seriously. So I think then obviously it depends a lot on what the simple idea is, but what he's, yeah, I get what you're saying. He's and saying what he's driving at is driving at uh, take yeah. something without complicating it too much. Yeah. By and the that's way, what they've done. That makes me think of that amazing book, The One Thing. Oh my God, if you haven't read that book, like run, don't walk. Really? The One Thing. The One Thing. I, you don't even need to read the book. I'll tell you what the one thing is. The one thing is decide what the one most important thing in your life is mm -hmm. and do that and make mm -hmm. sure that it happens. I think he recommends every day, but basically like on a very regular basis and don't let other stuff get in the way of the one thing because most of the time the one thing is something that is important but not urgent. And so we tend to be forced really like none of us want it but we tend to be forced to choose the urgent stuff because they have to get done and then the important stuff of which the one thing is the most important gets pushed down and so the point of the book is make sure you prioritize that one thing and then the whole book is about how to do that which is is worth reading well i'm buying it right now yeah it's i'm excellent. signing in it's excellent i'm signing in i think that's a great, great idea. Um, I just remember that movie with uh, Billy Crystal and they had the guy Curly on his horse out at the dude ranch and he like <laughs> city the slickers. secret of life. Yeah, city slickers. He, he holds up his finger. Movie. Was that Jack Palance who did that? Yeah, like this crust, crusty Jack Palance. One thing, one thing. That was really cool. <laughs> and he goes, "What's <laughs> and these the one city thing? guys are like, what? What's the, What's one, the thing? one thing?" All right, next quote. Like Warren, I had considerable passion to get rich, not because I wanted Ferraris. I wanted independence. I desperately wanted it. That's oh, cool. Man. Yeah, right on. All right. Uh, okay. You know, something this is a lot huge. of people miss about Munger is that he was an incredibly successful lawyer. Incredibly successful. His, as a like business person lawyer, his law firm, Munger Tolis, is one of the top law firms in the country and that is no easy feat i mean it, the, the legacy has in law is not so much of him as like winning certain cases or something like that but as a business person in law creating a law firm like that it's it's just unbelievable <laughs> and nobody ever you, talks about that i'll tell you another charlie trivia sure. is that his first investments in when he started getting going on having enough money to invest um were terrible and he lost money how do you know that? Yeah, he talks about it. He does? His, one of his books, yeah. I don't know if I've ever read about that. So he Tell ended up, more. Well, essentially- I love it's hearing like, failure stories. It's like starting to realize that you you have to buy wonderful assets, not just assets that are cheap. Oh, so he was doing the same as Buffett, basically, the cigar, cigar butt. But he was doing it with real estate, and it screwed up oh. badly. Right. So anyway, just a thought. This quote right here is huge. The big money is not in the buying and the selling, but in the waiting. Yeah. That one is so important, you guys, because it it's hard to understand it until you do what we do. Because you obviously think, well, you know, obviously we talk about a margin of safety. So the buying is important and we talk about, you know, holding it forever. So the selling is important. Here's Charlie selling, saying that that's not where you make your money. You make your money when you're not doing anything. You make your money waiting. I, I have to say I struggle with that one. And I think I think it's 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 correct. For me, it has to be coupled with I don't know what the exact quote is, but another thing that he said, which is 
essentially you have to wait, wait, wait. And then as soon as the opportunity arises, you strike. Yes. And because it comes it being passive aggressive. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're extremely passive until we get extremely yes. aggressive. And yes. that's the idea of, of you, you have wait to and have wait and then both. you load up the truck. You have to have both. And I think, you know, there's so many, at least this is my like outside view. There's so many financial leap, financial ish people who have to be told to wait because their whole thing is like, they're much more of the gambler type. They're much more of the like, let me do stuff. Let me do stuff. And so, uh, you know, I am one of the people who is a natural waiter and not, and I'm so risk averse that I'm like, not somebody who's good at, at striking when it's the right time. So I have to have, I have to hear both of those things or else I would just wait forever. Well, the waiting is on both sides, actually. So I think this is this is important to understand that the big money is not in the buying, it's in the waiting until buying. And the big money is not in the selling, it's the waiting while you own it. It's yeah. like, it's essentially, one of the real problems I've had in my career is selling too soon and not just staying on. I mean, the classic, of course, is Chipotle, which has been on this broadcast multiple times which is now at something like $1,500 a share. When I got out, just under 500 after doubling my position. It, it was one of the classic errors I've made in, in my investing career on that particular company. <clears throat> and this is not a company I don't know well. I know it extremely well. I just misunderstood what this market's doing. Yeah. Right? And on hindsight, of course, it's pretty clear. But... I looked at this thing and thought, you know, this is worth five to six hundred dollars a share in a reasonable to a reasonable person. I didn't see it's worth fifteen hundred dollars a share. But Charlie's point is never underestimate the power of the market to be irrational, particularly when it goes up. And you just sit there and you'll yeah. do much better than trying to be super clever. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. The um just one more point on this. The the portfolio that our students put together in Singapore, which is now 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago, 2009. Um, what is that? Two, it's, no, that's 11 years ago. Sorry. Um, they put a portfolio together of 10 companies. And this is something we do in every three-day class. But at that particular three-day class, the market had bottomed. And they nailed it. And that portfolio, since it was our first class, I've been tracking it the whole time. That portfolio has managed to do, as of 2018, the markets continued to go up. It was doing 32% per year compounded and it had a 1,250% return so far in it. Now, this is a paper portfolio, right? This was, now if they invested in it, great, they made that money. But the whole key was just sit there and do nothing. <laughs> and let the market yeah. take care of you. All you have to do is buy at the lowest point and then wait. It was classically <laughs> lucky. No doubt about it. Well, not entirely. I mean, I was very public right then saying, you know, we're loading up the truck. Here it is. It's I don't know where the bottom is, but this is bottomy enough. Yeah. After 18 months to just get going on it. So, Well, you know, I think what your students would do would learn and probably all of us need to learn is the those dips the peaks and the valleys they look like they don't matter so much over a very long period of time mm -hmm. you know 30 to 40 years of investing and when you're like going through it like right now and you have Warren Buffett putting out letters saying it's about to start raining gold so make sure you're ready it's I think you know, I've been through it now, but I'd never been through it before. And I think that's a really big challenge to say like, okay, I'm going to sit here and watch everything I own drop when I could have done something about it and been ready to buy when everything went down. So I don't think that the, like, I feel like decision making is the important thing to review, not so much the, the result matters to determine if your decision making was flawed or not. And so was the decision making flawed? And I think it was in terms of like, for me, I wasn't thinking of the right time frame. I should have been thinking much longer and just go through those valleys. Well, that's the point, isn't it? 
You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about how to invest, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. Thanks again for watching.